there will always be a time where if you stay calm enough, you're going to be able to heal through the ego. The way the ego observes situations around you and that observation is going to heal you so extreme, you're going to be amazed at what takes place. Welcome to Chronicles of a Nonprofit, episode 68. Today is October the 13th, 2023. It's a time of peace, a time of healing, a time of understanding, a time of reflection, a time of viewing the subliminal uh, attacks that are being posted upon those individuals who are healing the nation one person at a time, planting the seeds of opportunity one opportunity at a time. And it's a serenity. It's a healing process, regardless of what is taking place in the physical realm. Because that physical realm, entrepreneurs, welcome, welcome, welcome everyone in. Come on in, come on in, because I got some things to tell you. To be uplifted during this eclipse season, certain things are going to be cut out of our lives. Certain situations are going to change direction. And if we're observant enough, if we're healing the mind enough, we're going to be able to recognize it. And it's just going to be powerful. There's, again, the Chronicles. And the Chronicles has that area of highs and lows. And it could come in incremental minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, years, These things, they're always going to be temporally changing. One minute you're going to be extremely ecstatic by the wonderful people who embrace you, who empower you, who heal you through being human to you. And then there are going to be times where you're going to have to heal within and be human to others. And that is the connection in life that I'm seeing. I'm seeing that in every situation, being calm and understanding the precepts to what is taking place and observing it is the biggest key that could be. Thank you, Kendra. Thank you so much because it takes a lot to keep that ego in check, especially if you are a person who has been emotionally driven by anger and that type of practice. But when you have learned how to just step outside of the equation and be grateful for the life you have, I'm grateful for all the great people who walk this journey with me. And sometimes it may feel that physicalness may feel as though that one individual who was causing chaos and havoc and distractions, that they're bigger than all the other great things that's taken place. But if you sit back in hindsight and meditate and reflect, you don't have to compete with anyone in what you doing, entrepreneurs. You're staying in your own lane. People will begin to start showing you that they want you to acknowledge them. Why are you not acknowledging them? And then that energy decreases, dissipates, dies. And then again, there's another high and another low. I'm beginning to rationalize the battles in which I choose to fight as an entrepreneur And guess what I'm finding? That the more I continue to do the next right thing, the more I continue to keep healing within and not looking at the physical, which is the lowest vibration that could possibly be available to us. If I'm on a higher level, 
then a bully down in the physical realm (laughs) is doing absolutely nothing but wasting time, healing, helping me, assist me to grow and to mature into the concepts of what I am learning. The Buddha teaches it the best when it teaches that walking in silence is the most valuable thing that we can do entrepreneurs because people see the vision before we do a lot of times. And in seeing the vision, they want to intermittently prevent the opportunity. Why? We don't even need to worry about that. Because I feel in my heart that the more I continue to keep building my kingdom, because everyone has a kingdom to build. And I'm talking to those people who are building their business in loyalty and commitment and honor, and then trying their very best to stay off the radar, to do what it is they need to do. Sometimes when you have to pay to be a part of a community in order to do the things that you do, these fines and fees necessarily are to open up the devil's door, the gate to the devil's harem, you know, And sometimes that's not what we need to do. Sometimes we need to just sit back and we need to just allow life to take place as we know best, as we do best. And in doing that, we recognize that, you know, um, we're our greatest version. And in being our greatest version, The universe is going to send us subliminal signs and symbols of what to do next, how to secure, how to legally secure our our properties, protect those, um, rent to those individuals that, you know, are capable of being great tenants in a community and raising their children and building their their legacy, you know, it's simply amazing. You know, I have to also say to you, the mind can play some really, really funny games and people can also gaslight too, to make that emotional problem bigger. And what do we do in that situation? <laughs> we laugh, we smile, we chuckle, we we move to something else. Thank God I have 12 to 15 things to do in a day. If one thing doesn't work, I can ignore all of that and move to this. And then there's no drama on this reflection. And this is what I want to remind myself when I go back and listen to this audio, listen to this podcast and share in the relationship with those who care about themselves, their livelihood, their commitments to life. You know, we don't all have the answers to every single situation. However, on the other side of it, it works itself out. And today, October the 13th, marks a victorious time for me. And this is something I'm etching and putting into my future based on this historical day, this historical moment, this time when observations on the physical realm, on those areas where people try to take the joy out of what it is that we do, that we have passions for, those individuals no longer exist after today. It is completely, utterly blanked out as though it has never existed. 
you know, to much is given, much is required, but to those who stand the strongest, to those who stand and persevere through the challenges and through those areas of lower vibrational processes, will we see the end long before it takes place. It's called discernment. It's called putting what matters in our lives at the forefront of every action. And we carry that in in live time and we walk with that. We talk with that. We know to do this is going to get us so much further successfully in the walk in which we are prevailing. That is the power. (laughs) That is the key that I hold today. And I tell you, entrepreneurs, as a doctor of leadership, one of the things that I can do is get to the ground level of the physical realm or I can elevate to the highest level and be removed completely from any, from a thousand mile radius, just off the chart, off the chart. (laughs) So, so the frustration, the chaos tends to die away and we build what is known as residual momentum. I'm going to say residual because that is a term that is used in the entrepreneurial world. And residuals are good things, things that continue to make for you what you need it to make for you. So you can do other things. So residual processing is helping me to foster the next move. And it's like being calm, paying attention, being vibrant in what the knowingness is going to discern at a thousand mile radius. So I'm so far away from the concepts of the, the, the practice of trying to distract until it doesn't even matter. So one thing I want to leave today in this podcast is number one, do not compare yourself to anything that takes place in this world that you know is not of good. Never compare yourself, never lower yourself to that value, never go in trying to control that value because what will take place is that you will lose yourself. And freedom is the most expensive, valuable thing on the face of the planet. You can always get a new house. You can always get a new car. You can always get a new um, material possession. But time and freedom and discernment and loyalty and commitment and joy and peace of mind never be able to get back if it's lost. You'll never be able to get that back. You may be able to move forward and continue on, but you'll never get that particular incremental time back. And so that's what leads me to the greatness of realizing the battles in which I choose to fight The way I choose to do things today is so profoundly different than the way that I used to be. And that's why the adversities in life for me has always been the ultimate teaching lessons that made me say, whoa, I'm glad I did that. Because had I done that, because you pay attention to what you would have done if you had done it a different way. You do pay attention to that. And you do ask yourself, well, what if I did it this way? Would the outcome have been different? But then you think about it, it could have been worse. So entrepreneurs, I want you to hold that. Because as a leader, you're going to have to hold that in your backpack 
of discerning tools you're going to need in the highs and lows of the chronicles of a nonprofit, for profit, sole proprietor, <laughs> incorporation. And all the numbers that come with the status that we possess, that we label passions. Now, <clears throat> healing, I want to reiterate that. Yes, Natasha, I will get to that as soon as I finish this thought right here because I need to implement this into our, our podcast here. When we look at the manifestations of the things that validate us and make us greater in the end, it doesn't feel perfect. It doesn't feel stable. It feels very unsure. It feels, you know, you know that feeling when you get that off the, off the grid, you know, kind of balancing type thing. Can you skate? <laughs> And as you're rolling, you're trying to keep your balance at that particular moment. So, Natasha, it goes back to your question. Where do we find this power to validate all of the things that we know that our ego has always told us about who we are? We validate that through discerning that we have the power within us to initiate progress. If we've ever succeeded at anything, we take the value of that success and we reminisce on that success and we pull from that energy into the present moment and we keep it. Yes, we keep it in the archive, the mental archive. You know, I had a friend who was almost, say, 15, 16 years older than me. When I was in my 20s, so they were like 37, 38. And do you know they would tell me when I would have conversations with them? That's deep. D, that's deep, you know? And I would always wonder, what does that mean, Natasha? What does being deep mean? And just recently, the other day, I was in a mode of doing something around and I'm always in real time and I'm always thinking about what's going on and how I can make it better for myself, for me to heal. And as I'm going through that journey, entrepreneurs, that concept comes to me. I haven't talked to this woman in years. You know, I've healed from that. I've moved on from that. However, when she said that to me, it stuck out to me today. And that feeling of what I felt when I heard that deepness. At one point, I feel that when you say deep, it's, it, you know, when I looked the term up, it made it seem like, oh, it's something that is different than most people think. And yes, of course, if you are the one that is being called deep, what takes place is you carry the remnant of what that definition means to you per se. So when you hear deep, it could be anything. But me, I take it as a philosophical blessing. I take it as a wise and in, in, incorporated perspective that is so out there that most people on a daily basis would never think of it that way. However, it is needed in the moral walk, even on the physical realm. And so this is what I want to empower you entrepreneurs, my shining entrepreneurs, to keep moving. No matter how far you think someone is in the journey, remember the snapshots of a picture is only the memory of that moment. We don't know what happens years from that, what happened to get that you know, snapshot in memory time. We don't know what that person had to sell themselves to do in order to just get that moment in a memory snapshot. And that memory can sit there and it may look like it's multiplied by itself, but it's really not. So keeping track of what John 
or Joe or Benny does has nothing to do with the journey in which we have passionately decided to do for ourselves. Don't change the mission. Keep the mission and continue to keep chipping away at the mission because that is what's going to make you a legacy that's going to stand out, that's going to say that even though this was going on all around this person, they have favor. Their higher power put them in a position to show them the benefit of what being great was all about. And it didn't have to do with competition. It didn't have to do with putting someone else's freedom at risk. It didn't have to do with pushing money, dirty money, making it clean to make it look like something better is happening with it. It just had to do with the genuine nature of who the individual was and how they pursued their mission. And doing it in silence, entrepreneurs, is the best way. Um, Yes. I'm just going over reading some of the bulleted points that um that I'm getting here from the chat. Thank you all for being here. Listen. Yes. You know, and it comes to my Psalms 91. You know, my grandmother used to read that all the time. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. If I know that I am doing what I need to do in order to pursue the greatness of what it is, these man-made laws, these these um, defining judgments, these these critical practices of what the pagans choose to do has nothing to do with what we validate as entrepreneurs. And I want to put this out there for me to go back and revisit. Because I will say to the Most High that my refuge and my fortress is within the trust of what I know is right, what I know is correct, not what man tells me I must do, but what the Most High recognizes in the practice of what it is I do. So, yeah, even even those things that are for uh, anything other than my good is going to make me empowered. It's going to make me persevere and be greater than what I even am at that point. Long before I even met the individual or the group or the person or whatever. <laughs> and, and, and I love it when the the devil, the energy of spirit that is not of the walk in which we walk as an entrepreneur. I'm using this in the biblical tense because um, we need to use that sometimes to go back and validate what it is we truly believe and know to be true and self-evident because it's been walking with us since day one. But I love it when the forces of that which needs to be recognized tries to give their poisons as a subliminal message. I love that because it's up to us as entrepreneurs to discern and intuit what is being challenged? What's being said? What is being what is being supposedly rationalized to notice? What is being rationalized to be distracted in what it is we're doing? And that's why I say when we talk about the trust, 
We got to build trust like it's a fortress around us. The refuge. We have to have that place where we go. You know, when there's a a uh, situation that happens and we need to hide and we need to prepare ourselves for that point of um, just understanding that things are coming to see how strong and how grounded we really and truly are. Yeah. The powers that we believe in, the elevation of the spiritual realm is going to deliver us from the foul stench of the undeserved perseverer. Yeah, they're gonna. Let me tell you, entrepreneurs, and Kennedy, you got that right. They're going to excel. Some people can excel, and they know they're doing all the dirt. They're doing all the wrong. (laughs) And they will excel. Because what it is, is it is a, a understanding to show those who are motivated to stay passionate and to stay involved in their own lane what it looks like when it's not being respected, when the laws of the land are not being honored by all. So we live in a midst of people making choices, people deciding how they're going to do what they're going to do, regardless of what takes place. And that's when we have to discern which way we're going to go. That's what that is for. An example to say, are you going to follow in that path or are you going to continue on on the journey in which you were led to do? You know, don't be afraid of any of those things because these people who look mighty are the ones that's being shown by the discerning interpreter of intuition that their little minuscule problems that most people in society look as big giants. And I'm going to leave it at that. So today marks the day that I am so grateful for my freedom. I'm so grateful for the discernment of how I handle myself under situations that should not be connected to me, should not befall me. And although I walk through the valleys of all types of corruption, all types of of uh, distractions, I will fear nothing. I will continue to keep moving forward in all that I am to do because I know my ancestors are with me. I know they validate, and I know they will heal the land in which I stand. And that's all I care about. If I can just do that, if I can help an entrepreneur see the the ways that happens in this corrupt world and still shine and be their greatest being in what it is they're doing, I've done my best. And I don't need a building to do it. I don't need... Uh, a consortium. <laughs> I don't need a million dollars. I don't need $10 million to do that. That should be something that should be given as a humanitarian aspect. And that's what I love about YouTube and the social media platforms. One thing that the corrupt cannot do is corrupt those people they don't know. <laughs> and you are those people that those corrupt individuals do not know. And that's why you're here at Chronicles of a Nonprofit. And I really truly appreciate everything that everyone does. And all of these are historical conversations that will make us greater in the end. And that's why I put them out. So for all those who are really and truly working at being their best self. Continue to be consistent. Continue to be on time and continue to be the best version of the individual walking in your shoes because you got it. You got what it takes. (laughs) And with that, stay blessed and we'll see you next time.